Good day, Grade Elements. Welcome to this fourth lesson in Week 23. In the last lesson, we learned that there is a magnetic field around a current carrying conductor. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the right-hand rule, which helps us work out the direction of the magnetic field. So we said that there is a magnetic field around a straight current carrying conductor. So if you look here, you can see we've got a little circuit, and the most important thing is that we've got a straight wire just as was shown in the last lesson okay so a straight line going down there was a piece of cardboard and they had magnets but in this diagram what they've done is they've used iron filings and you can see that there is a magnetic field that is circular and it's in concentric circles around the current carrying conductor now what we want to know is obviously we can't carry little um, compasses around with us that help us to work out which way is north or south in this magnetic field. So there is a trick and the trick is the right hand rule. So we can use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field around the straight conductor. So what you need to do is you need to hold the conductor which is the wire in your right hand. That's why it's called the right hand rule. And your thumb needs to be in the direction of the conventional current. In other words, from positive to negative. Okay? So your thumb is going from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. And then what happens is, as you grip it, your fingers will now curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So in other words, as the fingers curl here around, okay, in an anti-clockwise direction, yeah, you can see that this here is the north side. So in other words, if we put a little magnet here, you would see, I mean a little compass here, you would see that this would point towards the north pole. And that is how we work out the direction of the magnetic field around a straight current carrying conductor. So obviously it's very difficult to draw these in three dimensions. I mean, you've seen my drawings. <laughs> I could not possibly draw that and get away with it. But what we can do and what we do do is we draw them just as we do with circuits, we draw it using um, symbols. So we represent a conductor carrying current, conductor carrying current into the page with an X and that coming out of the page with a dot. Now, you might think, why X and dot? Well, it's pretty easy if you think about this analogy. If you think about the arrow, an arrow, okay, that is being shot, if you see the arrow from the back side, okay, from where these little feathers are, then do you agree it looks like a cross? So therefore, when we see the cross, we think about the arrow going away from us, which means the current is going away from us as well, okay? Similarly, yeah, if we see the arrow come towards us, what do we see? We see the point. Okay, so that means the arrow is coming towards us, just like the current would be coming towards us here, yeah, out of the page. So that's why we draw it as a point. So this is the front end of the arrow, and this is the back end of the arrow. So this is coming out of the page, and that's going into the page. And if you just practice quickly with your right hand rule, you'll notice that this is the direction of the magnetic field. If we push our thumb up towards us, then the, our fingers are going to curl around, okay, and therefore this is going to be the direction. Whereas here, if the thumb is away from us, our fingers are curling around that way, and therefore we will see it going into the page. I mean, we will see the arrows going the opposite direction. Now, that's all very well, but what happens if the two wires, or these two wires yeah we have two wires instead of one wire so if we have two wires instead of one wire there it is if we have two wires instead of one wire then what's going to happen is that the field lines are going to interact okay so i'm just going to get a little pen out here so i can draw stuff for you let's make it red yeah okay so if for example we had a field line and let's pretend there was another one over here, okay, which there is, and there's this one over here. But now what happens at this point? At this point, this field line is going in this direction, but this field line is going in that direction. And what you have there is destructive interference. So what happens is there is no field, okay, there is absolutely no field and they cancel each other out which is why we don't have them. So because there is a space there with no field lines what happens is if you have wires 
of a same going in the same direction with the current going in the same direction they have a force of attraction towards each other so if you have wires with the current carrying in the same direction we have force of attraction towards each other whereas if you look over here yeah the field lines are going this way whereas yeah the field lines are going this way okay so what happens is they reinforce each other and you end up with repulsion so this is the only time when similar attract and opposites repel okay so let's show this little video and I want you to just look at it quickly it's a little video showing that like what happens when we've got two wires where the current is traveling in the same direction okay so let's have a look at that so you've got two wires next to each other parallel and we've got current that's now going to be traveling the same direction and look how quickly they are attracted towards each other okay and how strongly they are attracted towards each other so now you can see that this definitely happens as soon as we have current traveling in the same direction between two parallel lines between two parallel wires we have a magnetic attraction right now what happens we're going to join the mindset learn team as they teach us and show us what happens when we make a single loop so when a single conductor is bent into a loop the magnetic field lines from the two parts of the conductor are squashed into the area inside the loop. Do you remember from the last lesson that a region where field lines are close together indicates the presence of a strong magnetic field? So here, inside the loop, the magnetic field is strong. You should also see that the direction of all the magnetic field lines inside the loop is the same pointing out of the loop. Now look at the magnetic field on the outside of the loop. Here the magnetic field direction is the same on both sides of the loop but points in the opposite direction to the field inside the loop. Also notice that there are fewer field lines here than inside the loop. So here the magnetic field is weaker than it is inside the loop. So, the effect of bending the wire into a loop clearly affects the shape of the field. Have you seen this pattern before? Of course, the shape is similar to the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Let's compare the magnetic field formed by a current carrying conductor in a single loop to the magnetic field around a permanent magnet. Notice that in the bar magnet, the field lines inside the magnet run in the same direction close together and then loop around from the North Pole to the South Pole in two separate loops. Notice that the field lines are closest together at the poles and that they point out at the North Pole and in at the South Pole. The shape of the magnetic field of the bar magnet is very similar to the shape of the field formed by the single current carrying loop. In this loop, the magnetic field lines are also closer together inside the loop, indicating that there is a magnetic pole here. Can you figure out whether this side of the loop is a north or south pole? Well, since the field lines are pointing out of the loop here, this end of the loop must be the north pole of the electromagnet and the other side of the loop must be the south pole of the electromagnet. Right, grade 11s, and so you saw the magnetic field around the single loop. Note that they're calling it an electromagnet. And why are they doing it? Because it's what they need for it to become a magnet or to act like a magnet is for electricity to run through that loop. So it's an electromagnet because it only acts as a magnet when there is electricity flowing through the loop. And that is that for this lesson. Have a great day.